All right, let's add some more details to this thing. And I want to show you a cool trick with Gumball called Subobject Selection. Subobject Selection allows you to pick a piece of a polysurface. In Rhino, anytime a couple of surfaces are joined into a solid entity, it's called a polysurface. The cool thing about Gumball is if you hold down the Control and Shift key, you can pick a piece of an object. And if I start dragging this and tap Alt, I can actually make a copy of just that piece. This is super useful when you want to detail stuff because now I can shift drag and then I can also do another trick with Gumball called Surface Extrude. If I pick this, click, hold down the control key and then drag, you'll notice that I can just extrude another little piece of geometry. This is super useful because not only can I create something to add a little protrusion, I can also use this to create a cutting object, which allows me to make a little detent. So let's use that same technique to add one more little detail here. So I'm going to control shift click. I'm going to click, drag, and then tap alt. A little bit of keyboard wizardry going on there. Shift drag. And then I'm going to click, hold down control, and drag. That was really, I'm sure, confusing the first time you saw it, but roll back through it a couple of times and try it yourself, and I think you'll find that it's a pretty awesome workflow. And we'll be doing this a ton, so if you missed it, don't worry. You're going to see it a million more times throughout the course of this model. So I just built this little cap with a little gap in there, so I'm going to go ahead and just add some fillets in there because I want to knock that off. And I'm already set to be pretty small. And let's look at the preview and just make sure that makes sense. See how the preview is getting really close to the edge? I don't like that, so I'm going to pull this one a little smaller. And I'm going to pull this one a little smaller. And then run those. All right, so let's finish this up. And our wheel is pretty close to complete here. But I just I want to go into these spokes just one more time. So I'm going to turn on the points. and. Hopefully history is still enabled here, and if it's not, we can always enable it some more, and it is. So let's pull this a little bit and maybe add a little bit of puff to the end here, just to give it a little bit more substantial feel to kind of go with the feeling of this model, maybe even a little more. Let's go to perspective view and take a look and see how that feels. I'm pretty good with that. Maybe even just pick one point and give it just a little bit of section. See how I'm just pinching that just a hair? Just to give it a little section, just to change the highlight shape there. Very simple, just little sculpted detail. So let's combine this, and we want to combine this with some thought towards what is going to be what color. The rim and the spokes are obviously going to be the same color, so I can stick all these together. So let's just Boolean those together. The hub and the spokes are going to be the same, so let's Boolean those together. This little protrusion is going to be the same color. Maybe this cap and maybe the lug nuts. Maybe they'll be a little different color, so I'm going to leave those for now. Although if we print it, you know, we'll want to combine that. But for now, I'll just go ahead and leave that. Let's take a look at this intersection and see how this feels. I kind of like the sharpness here. But again, I'm going to want to put a little fillet in there in order to knock off that sharpness from being absolute, absolute. So let's go ahead and run fillet around here. And let's take a look at the size of that. That might be too big. So let's use set all and go 0 0.005 and run that. I feel better about that. So I want to keep this spoke because it's good. And I want to get rid of all the other ones. And I know that a 360 degree circle divided into five points is 72. If you split that in half, you get 36. So I need to rotate 36 degrees this way, 36 degrees that way. So I'm going to pick this. I'm going to rotate. Copy is set to yes. I'm going to start here and I'm going to go 36 degrees and then I'm going to go negative 
36 degrees and say OK. And you'll notice that I get a pi that if I measure should be 72 degrees, which it is. So I can use these two curves to trim the wheel and then transform array polar 5 to make five pieces that join up into a closed poly surface. And the last thing that I need to do is just make some sort of hub for the back of this thing. And I don't like this broken up into a bunch of pieces, so I'm going to pull this out using extract, and I'm going to delete it. But I'm going to recap it using actually the cap command. And that gives me a nice, clean cap back here. I'm going to do the sub-object selection trick that I did before, which is I'm going to Control-Shift-Click, click, drag, tap Alt, and let go. And this gives me a copy that I'm going to Shift-Drag to make just a little bit smaller. I'm going to tuck this inside the model, and I'm going to just drag it out holding down Control to extrude a hub. And I may need to even make that a little deeper so that I could put an axle on that. And we'll have to take a look later and see if we need to add some reinforcement ribs or anything like that in there. But for the time being, we're going to call that good. Now, I do need a hole in the center at some point. So for now, I'm just going to tap a point in there. And that will allow me, when I determine what my axle dimension is, I can use that as a center point to go through there. Let's join these two up. Just use a Boolean union. And that should be our wheel. Only thing left is to just evaluate it. And when I'm evaluating something, I like to do a little properties trick, which is to pick the thing, go to properties. And I like to scroll down here where it says show surface isoprimes. I like to shut that off so that the display is a little bit cleaner. All the additional surface isoprams are gone and it's just a little bit cleaner to evaluate. So I've got one wheel. It looks good. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to pick the entire thing and I'm going to just drag, and then while I'm dragging, I'm just going to tap Alt and get myself a front wheel. Go to wireframe to evaluate the size, which is too big. I'm going to shift drag on a scale handle to get it to be about the right size, and just place it. Go to shaded view, and we should have two nice tires. So now that we have the wheels placed, we just want to mirror them across the center line so we can get a little bit of an evaluation as to what the model is going to look like. So let's just pick both. We'll go to mirror. I'm going to type zero for the center line and plop it over there. Go back to perspective view. So now we can start to kind of with that image plane, we can start to visualize kind of the feel of this thing. And we can evaluate it on our top view to make sure that it's appropriate to where it should be. And in this case, it looks like maybe it's a little fat in the back. So I'm going to just push that in and history will adjust the mirror. So with that, I think we've got our wheels wrapped up. I'm going to make a layer just for organizational purposes. And I'm going to select them all. Right click, change object layer. And then I can turn them on and off. Or better yet, I can lock them. That way I don't screw them up. So I'm going to do a little cleanup. I'm going to make a layer here called curves. And any curves that are just kind of orphaned out there, I'm going to just put them here and hide them just in case there's something that I happen to need at a later date. 